listen, I don't want any more bullshit. bullshit. What's up, what's up, fellow Colts fans, and welcome back to the Bullshit Free Colts Podcast. Man, do you need to hear from your man today. As always, I'm Harkon Ajala, your host, and the reason you need to hear from me today is because the Colts go down to Cleveland, lose 32 to 23, and, you know, you're been Frank Reich. I just listened to his press conference. He's still all in this Pollyanna bullshit about how, you know, it actually was, wasn't was as bad as it looked, and I'm encouraged, and Phillip's playing good ball, and all this bullshit. Nah. So you know how we do it here. You're not going to have that kind of smoke blown up your ass here. This podcast is the one and only official place in the world where you can get all things Colts news with no coach speak, no PR, no PC spin, and most importantly, as you know, no bullshit. So let's jump right into this. Um, here's the thing. Believe it or not, there's good news and bad news from this loss. Yes, there is some good news, and this is why you listen to your man, because I'm going to give you the real good news, not the smoke up your ass good news that Frank Reich and the Indianapolis media are going to try to tell you. Yes, there is good news, but there sure as fuck is bad news. And you know, I always tell you that about six games into the season, you pretty much know who you are. Well, we're a little earlier now. This was the fifth game. And let me tell you, even though we haven't completely gotten through the sixth game, by playing an explosive offense today, and a good team on the road in Cleveland. Um, I could pretty much say you can tell right now what we have in the Colts. And we're going to get into that because a lot of stuff became clear today. Some of it's stuff that I was concerned about. Some of it's stuff that I wondered about. But here's the one fucking question that we got to consider right now after watching this game today. Man, we got to be honest about this. Like, we got to ask, is this fucking Colts offensive line overrated? I mean, all we hear is about how great they are and all that bullshit. And maybe they've been reading their own press. But this year, they have not been good at all. They've been getting their asses handed to them, quite frankly. They've been kind of trashed this year. Real talk. And we're going to talk about that. But first, as always, let's get into uh, our first segment, the good, the bad, and the ugly. First, the good. Well, here's the deal. Uh, here's what was good. Real talk. Uh, I was really waiting to see this game, to see this Colts defense go up against an explosive top tier offense. And we got to see what we need to see today. The Colts defense is elite. Um, today, without uh, Kamiko Ture, even more impactful without Darius Leonard, they hold this explosive Cleveland Browns offense to only 23 points. Now, yeah, they gave up some yardage in the first half. And, uh, you know, Baker Mayfield made some plays. But look, you got to understand, again, this is an explosive team. And if you go back and actually watch, man, they fucking Odell Beckham Jr. and fucking Jarvis Landry, uh, and even the other dude. I mean, they made some incredible catches where the defense was right there. Now, I didn't like the amount of zone that we played in that first half, and I thought that kind of let them get loose on us. But here's the truth. I mean, for the most part, we held them in check. We had a couple of breakdowns. I remember Julian Blackman left the game for a while, and one of the touchdowns happened on a when you ha we had a guy playing safety. For Julian, who was not even a safety. So other than the fact that we didn't get as much pressure in that first half, um, still, keep in mind, we held him down. And we only gave up 23 points. In the second half, the defense uh, made adjustments and clamped down on their fucking asses. This defense is for real, and it is elite. And there's no fucking way that I can not talk about the electrifying 101 yard kickoff return for a touchdown from our guy Isaiah Rogers, which literally saved the Colts' ass. 
put us back in the game because that was literally right after, came immediately after Phillip Rivers threw the pick six. So having that from one of our draft picks this year was absolutely fantastic. Other than that, the only other thing that we really can say was good is that, hey, our field goal kicker is making his field goals. He had a little slip up there, but look, our guy is fucking making it happen now, kicking field goals, which is a great thing because we're going to need him this year. That's clear. But that takes us to, uh, you know, we got to get into the bad. And I mean, look, um, there's a few things that we really can't get around. Five games in, and there are a few things that stand out that have been consistent, not just like off on one game, et cetera. One thing, I mean, the offense is just not getting it done. It's just not getting it done. And a large portion of that does have to do with the fact, I mean, people say no excuses, but the truth of the matter is sometimes it's not a matter of an excuse, but there are reasons. And look, missing our number two and number three wide receivers is hurting us because that's a big part of why the offense really can't get untracked. Um, We just don't have enough difference makers out there who can get it done, particularly since what teams are now doing to us is they're stacking the box and saying, look, we're going to shut down the run and make you guys beat us. We don't think you can beat us with your quarterback, but even more than that, with the guys you have catching passes. T.Y. Hilton was a little bit better today, but still not looking like the T.Y. of old. And our other dudes out there, let's be honest, are just guys, even though Marcus Johnson made some big catches today. He made a big catch last week. I think Marcus is a good guy to have on the squad. Of course, I love Zach Paschal. He's always there around the ball making plays. But these are dudes, I mean, they're just guys who can play on your team. They're not starter caliber. Period. in the story. And that shit is hurting us. Uh, the other thing that's hurting us, let's, let's, let's go ahead and be honest about it. Uh... I talked a little bit before about being able to see like what we have, where we are. Um, Philip Rivers, here's the thing. Philip Rivers would be fine as a game manager. Um, He's accurate for the most part when he's not rushed, when he's not under pressure. He's accurate. Um, He makes decisions quickly, gets the ball out quickly. But the thing is, the guy can't fucking, he can't even move. He's, He's maybe worse than Tom Brady, maybe. I mean, he's fucking like stuck in quicksand. So you got to give him time back there. If you don't pass block, we're in trouble. He can't do anything to get out of trouble, to move and buy himself time to make plays. He's a fucking statue back there. Um, The other thing is, like I can see now for sure, his arm strength is okay. It's okay. It's passable to be a starter. But he's definitely lost some arm strength. And you can see at times, man, it takes just another half second too long for his balls to get like across the field, especially if he's throwing across the field into the flats, those types of things. And I mean, that makes a difference. That makes a big difference when you're trying to throw in the tight windows and he's trying to get the ball there quickly. I've seen several times today and over the last few weeks, The guy's having to wait just a second for him to get the ball there. I've seen a couple of times where it's like he can't quite get the ball there with the velocity and the power he needs to. It's not something that absolutely kills his ability to be a good starter. But, you know, if you start asking him to come back, it's just fucking asking for disaster. We got to basically be in games either ahead or, you know, within seven points because The thing about Phil, and this this is something I can see for sure now, when he gets pressed, either because of pressure and he feels like, hey, I got to make a play to get us back in the game or whatever, he's going to throw the fucking ball up. (laughs) He's going to be risky, take chances. And, you know, a lot of times that's when these really bad fucking looking interceptions come. You know, he threw a pick six today. The pick six was just a bad, bad throw. Bad read, bad throw. The second interception, again, is like, you know, he's trying to get out of trouble because he's under pressure. He's just trying to make something happen because at that point in the game, we did need something to happen. It wasn't absolutely critical, 
that it happened then, but we did need something. We were behind. He's trying to bring us back, and that is when shit gets dicey. And I don't mean spicy. I mean shit gets dicey as fuck and shaky when it comes to Philip. So he is what he is. To me, the jury is in. I think he's a passable stopgap for this year. And if you play well around him, he can take you into the playoffs, maybe even deep in the playoffs if everybody's doing their job around him. But if he's the one that's got to get get it done for you, that ain't what we want. That ain't what we want. A couple more problems that, that fall into the bad category. Um... The running game is not getting it done, and I think we can really see why. But before we get into that, let's talk about this. These fucking penalties. I mean, too many penalties in in critical times and positions on the field. Penalties in the red zone. Penalties after you've had a great play. Too many fucking holding penalties, which are terrible because it's a 10-yard penalty. This is a sign of a team that... You know, I don't know about the coaching. And that brings me to the last thing that I really had to put in the bad category. Man, I'm not, you know, I've heard a lot of people who just kind of, for some reason, called Frank Reich this big play-calling genius, offensive genius. But if you really look like, based on what? Based on what? He didn't call the plays in Philadelphia. The year they won the Super Bowl, Doug Peterson was calling those plays, even though Frank Reich was the offense coordinator. And, you know, when when Frank was in San Diego as the OC, I mean, he got fired after a couple of years. I mean, there wasn't anything great that happened there. And in all honesty, every now and then he has a good one here for sure. I remember in 2018, it's you know, he had, I think, his best year play calling. But I, I, his plays don't really impress me. His play calling is suspect. But just his offense in general. I mean, if you looked, compare the two today. The Cleveland Browns offense itself is inventive. It's, they catch you off guard. They run a lot of misdirection. You know, they're having the wide receivers throw passes. They're using reverses, fake reverses. Now, they have more talent on their offense, particularly now without, with all the injuries the Colts have. But still, the plays they're calling, I mean, they just look better to me. Uh, Frank's plays and whether it's, I don't know if it's Phillip checking into and out of stuff or what, but I mean, Frank's plays, I don't really see anything that looks uh, particularly impressive. The The play they ran on the, that got him the touchdown today was a great play. But I mean, it, just being real, I don't see anything outstanding about Frank as a play caller. Not only his play calling, but the plays, and let's be honest, like that fucking safety, man, calling a pass play right there, I get where he was thinking they, they were expecting to run and all that, but you're already behind, you know, you've been shaky, they've been all in your backfield all day. I don't think that was a great play call, particularly when you keep in mind that when you go and look at the play, there really wasn't any outlet receiver in case it didn't work well. All the receivers were 15, 20 yards down the field, man. We hadn't completed but maybe two plays further than five or six yards. And so to me, calling that play in the shadow of our end zone was just a bad play call. And even Frank said that himself. So those things are really bad. And they've kind of consistently been bad. But that brings us to... The final part of this segment, and that's, yeah, the butt fucking ugly. The butt fucking ugly. And here's the truth. This brings us back to the question from the very beginning. Um, this fucking offensive line, I mean, based on what we've seen on the field, I mean, you can come up with this and that and these excuses, but until today... All five of the starters on the offensive line were playing. This offensive line, the way they're playing on the field right now, like they're fucking overrated. People need to stop telling them they're the best in the league and top five in the league. Maybe they were last year. But this year, they can't fucking run the ball to save their lives. There's no holes there. They were doing fairly well pass blocking, but today when they came up against um, 
you know, I mean, it was fucking pressure all over the place today. Now, I understand Anthony Costanzo was out. I get that. I'll go back and watch the film. But to be honest with you, you know, a lot of the problems was necessarily just LaRaven Clark getting beat today. I mean, he had problems when he went one on one with uh, Miles Garrett, no doubt. But everybody does. But my question is, why the fuck was he going one on one with Miles Garrett so often? And number two. That wasn't really what was killing us. Miles was moving around. They were fucking all over Philip Rivers. Philip was getting maybe a one to one and a half seconds back there. So today, the offensive line didn't play worth a damn today. Now they kind of got the running game going a little bit in the second half, but I mean, honestly, that is mostly because they were behind by ten points or more, and so. The Browns, I think, were expecting the pass. They were playing the pass at that point. The first half, nothing was going on. And this ain't just been this game. They haven't been able to run the ball worth a damn all year, except in that game, that second game. Other than that, it's been ugly. Fucking Quentin Nelson is getting holding calls. Uh, you know, this shit is not looking good at all. I mean, these dudes need to look in the fucking mirror and get back to proving it on the field instead of, I guess, listening to their press or just taking for granted that they're great. Because I'm telling you, that fucking offensive line has been getting outplayed weekly, and they got their asses handed to them today. I mean, as much as people want to be mad at Phillip Rivers, and Phillip deserves that criticism as far as those fucking dumbass interceptions and the safety too. Now, the safety, I get what he was saying. Maybe he saw a player over there, but I also get why they said, no, nah, you know, there's not anybody close enough over there, and they called it intentional grounding. But um, people were all shitty at Phillip and wanting to say it's all about Phillip, but, man, it was the offensive line today got their fucking asses beat. They got punk today in the run game and in pass blocking. It was ugly. Now, I'm not going full-on hot take and saying that they're trash. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying the way they're playing right now, they're definitely overrated. They're not the best line in the league. They're not even in the top five, not the way they're playing right now. Now, we know when they play up to their potential, they may be the best in the league. They're certainly in the top three or five. But it ain't about your potential. It's about what you do in the fucking field and – they ain't getting it fucking done. I mean, they're fucking overrated. They're trash right now. They, The way they're playing, man, they got to take the fucking challenge and step it up or this team is going nowhere because one thing is for certain. This team, like I said, it certainly is a playoff team because the defense is elite. The defense is for real. And when the offensive line plays up to their potential, they can run the ball. They should be able to run the ball. When they can run the ball and give Phillip Rivers time. When Phillip Rivers has time, he's fine. He's fine. Hopefully, you know, the offense can get back Paris Campbell or maybe Pittman or both at some point this season. But whatever the case, this team... The defense is going to be there every week. They're going to play well enough to give the team a chance to win every week. But this offense has got to do its part. And in order to do it, I mean, the heart of it is going to come down to, especially with, you know, all the pieces missing, the heart of it is going to come down to the offensive line. Like, they got to be as good as advertised. If not, this team is going no place. It might not even make the playoffs. If they step their fucking game up and get back to playing like they could and they should, then this team can make the playoffs and go deep. I mean, it's sitting at three and two right now. And get and look, let's be honest. You know, of these two games, if you, you figure if you get a split, you can live with that. The truth of the matter is we shouldn't have fucking lost that game to sad ass Jacksonville. If we had taken care of business there, we'd be four and one right now and we'd be fine. But the rest of our division is trash. 
Uh, other than Tennessee and Tennessee, we don't even know if they're going to play another fucking game this year. They keep having motherfuckers test positive for the coronavirus. These motherfuckers are got people testing positive for the coronavirus so that they're locked out of their facility. And then the motherfuckers go and have a practice together someplace else. And then more people test positive. So I don't even know if fucking Tennessee is going to ever get to play again. Either way, the Colts are in good position if we take care of business. That starts with next week. We need to go and beat the brakes off of Cincinnati next week at home here in the Luke and then go into the bye week on a high. Hopefully, you know, that'll give us time for maybe if man, if we could just get at least Pittman back or Paris Campbell, we need one of those guys back badly. And then hopefully Kamoko Toure will be back after the bye week and we can get that pass for us. We can really see it the way we anticipated being. Either way, Colts are in good shape going forward for the future because, I mean, again, Julian Blackman, man, I was really worried today when he went out of the game injured, but he came back in. That dude has Pro Bowl, all pro written all over him. His closing speed, man, he his instincts, his striking ability. I mean, he made some massive hits today, some great reads. Our, our safeties are in good shape. Our linebackers are in good shape. Our defensive line is looking great. And like I said, we get Kamoko Toure back. It's only going to be better in terms of getting pass rush. We're good to go. Our offensive line should be set if they fucking play, even though I'm still not 100% sold on Glow on that right side. And, and I don't even know for sure if I'm completely Sold on Braden Smith as the right tackle. I mean, he'd be an unbelievable guard. But, again, they're fine. If they play the way they need to play and they are capable of playing, they'll be fine. Um, I do think Pittman and Paris Campbell, if Paris Campbell can ever stay healthy, I do think that they are a good, solid future for the wide receiver position. Our tight ends look good. We got to solve that issue of quarterback, but my guess is that's going to be next year. One thing I have to say, I mean, look, you got to have a mobile quarterback in in the today's NFL game. In my opinion, you need a mobile quarterback. It don't have to be fucking Lamar Jackson, but they got to be able to at least move around and, and buy time with their feet, make plays with their feet sometimes, throw on the run. Um, I think that the days of the, I think the days of the Phillip Rivers are over in this league, at least where we stand right now. But the Colts are going to be fine. But they got to fucking bring it. They got to cut out the mistakes. The offensive line's got to play. And God damn it, fucking Frank Reich. I, I mean, I, I said this early on in the first podcast from this season. I don't think Frank can change. I don't think he will change. But, man, somebody in that fucking locker room – has got to set a standard of excellence and not be fucking making excuses and patting people on the fucking asses, metaphorically, when they make mistakes. It's like he's incapable of saying, yeah, Phillips got to not throw a fucking interception. Phillips got to not turn the ball over. Like, these dudes are not going to fucking fall into pieces. They're not going to need therapy because you constructively criticize them. You point out when they need to play better. But it's just like it's not in Frank's constitution, and I think that's a real problem because it you know, it allows a team to get lax and to rest on its laurels and always be thinking that, oh, it's okay if we made this mistake or what. It ain't fucking okay. Mistakes are not okay. Penalties are not okay. Turnovers are not fucking okay. Bad throws, bad decisions from the quarterback position will ruin your season. It ain't fucking okay, Frank. Stop looking for the fucking bright side and the silver lining of a goddamn hurricane cloud. Call it like it is. Hold these dudes accountable and set a standard for excellence and perfection. I say it all the time, like my coaches always told me, perfection is not attainable, but it is something that you aspire to. Because when you aspire to perfection, you can get close to it. And as great Tony Dungy used to always say, you 
lose more games than you get beat in. And today was a winnable game for the Colts, even though they were missing people, even though they were on the road, even though Cleveland was a good team. Cleveland won by nine points. We gave them nine points. Phillip Rivers threw a pick six, turned into seven. Then you had the safety with the fucking intentional grounding in the end zone. There's the other two points right there. Defense only gave up 23 points. The defense only gave up two touchdowns. And that was all in the first half. They fucking shut Cleveland down in the second half. So, all in all, a lot of things really became clear to us today. We're not a Super Bowl team. Not yet. Not missing our weapons and not with Phillip Rivers. Not yet. But, We can get to the playoffs and and win a game or two if we play the way we're capable of playing and if everybody steps their game up from the coaching staff, at least the offensive staff, and the offensive line in particular. They got to step up. They do. We can get this done. All the Colts need to do, though, again, it's not like the season's over. We're okay. You win this next one at home against Cincinnati. You're four and two going into the bye week, and we're in good position. So that's what we got to do. I appreciate it, all y'all being here. Let me know. Again, I'm saying right now the answer to the burning question is that, yes, the Colts offensive line right now is fucking overrated. They are overrated, and they need to fucking step it up if they want it to be different. But if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. You disagree? You agree? Am I wrong? Are they as good as everybody thinks and just in a slump or what's happening? Let me know. You agree, you disagree. I appreciate it. Either way, you know I'm always going to keep it 100 with you and give it to you bullshit free. Unlike Coach Reich and the soft-ass Indianapolis media, this is where you come for Colts fans where we can keep it real and talk about what needs to be talked about and hopefully cheer our team on. To a fucking Super Bowl. I haven't completely given up on that. You never know. Either way, I appreciate you being here. Make sure that you comment below what you think. Like this video if you enjoyed it, entertained by it, if it was valuable, and share. And of course, subscribe. I will see y'all in the next one next week for sure. And I say to any cold tour listening, and I know a couple listened because one reached out to me last week. Um, To my beloved Colts, you know what I always say and what I'm about. Let's go get another fucking Lombardi, baby. Peace.